Coming up on today's episode, the most anticipated set-top box of the year, the Boxy Box ships. Does Vizio have the best bargain HD TV of the year? Google TV fight Oppo's new Blu-ray player viewer questions, and of course, the Blu-ray releases for the week of November 16, 2010. This is HD Nation. Today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace, Busted Tees, and Audible.com. Get a free audiobook at audiblepodcast.com slash HDNation. Welcome to HD Nation. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. Blu-ray online satellite cable over the air if it's in HD. We like it. Yeah, we do. Okay, so we got to tell everybody the Boxy Box is available for purchase. We were planning on reviewing it in this episode of HD Nation. Unfortunately, the Boxy Box we were supposed to have in-house for testing is missing in action, possibly in Monaco. Should it return in time, we'll figure out a way to get the review in this episode of HD Nation. And if we did not, my apologies. I promise it will be on Techzilla and HD Nation next week. Nice. Now, I return to our regularly scheduled episode. Nielsen. Okay. Ratings people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, according to the blog at Nielsen.com, you might have heard that the TV ratings people, well, those are the TV ratings people, 56% of all U.S. households have HD televisions. This is good. Yeah. I like this. Yeah. And according, and according to Nielsen, more than 80% of television viewing is still a standard definition viewing experience. The bang! And then we realized they kind of sloughed a whole bunch of studies together. They, they did, but <laughs> the overall picture is is that most of the content people watch on their HD TVs at home is actually standard definition material. Well, it's kind of weird, right? You look at Nielsen's stats, it turns out 80% it's 80 of all homes, or 80% of the watching in all homes with HD TVs. With period. Oh. Actually, it turns out. Period. All oh. homes. Well, that it's is weird. a sluffy number. Yeah, then. it is a sluffy number, not HD TVs. Nielsen says 44% of homes either do not have an HD set or HD service. Because most homes have at least one non HD TV set, about one third of programming is viewed on a standard set. And even on HD sets, about 20% of the viewing is through non HD feeds. Okay. That makes Well, it, it kind of makes sense. If you don't have an HD TV, you're probably not watching HD True. at home. So about 80% of the viewing in the U.S. is in standard def, but it's either because it's on a secondary set in the home yeah. or because people just aren't into the, the HD thing. I don't think anybody watching this program is using the wrong cable with their <laughs> HD set-top box. At least I hope so. Yeah, so. please check to make sure that you're feeding your HD TV over an HDMI or component connected, uh, preferably at 720p or 1080p. Just saying. 1080i, 1080p. You know, if it's the little yellow RCA jack, your video's <laughs> coming over, Robert's going to come to your house and right. fix it. <laughs> I will fix it. It's a good week. Do you like hockey? I like watching it in HD. <laughs> He's going to be happy. NHL's Game Center Live is coming in HD. Uh, it's like out on the Roku and the PS3, along with an updated app for the Boxy Box or for Boxy Period, right? Because nice. you can build a Boxy machine out of a PC or a Mac. PlayStation Plus and Roku subscribers get highlight stats and info for free. The full Game Center Live service costs 170 bucks, 169 bucks for the season, but it streams live out of market games. So there's still a blackout like MLB.com. Uh, three years of archives. 500 classic games, so you can probably get your Gordy Howe on in a really horrifying way. But you can watch full-length and condensed replays of the current season games 48 hours after they air, no blackouts. And part of me is like, oh, you know, like all my baseball fans, right. friends, are like all the baseball guys are like, oh, the local stuff's blacked <laughs> out, but you can watch it later. I mean, the flip side is like with hockey, it's even worse than baseball. Because hockey, there's like 160 games to eliminate like four teams from the playoffs for the World Cup. That's true. If you're, Cup. if you're not, if you're not loving Cup your local for team. Hockey, if you're Stanley not loving Cup. the local team, it's like you have really no other choice but to probably wait until the finals kick in before you can get really interested into it. And when I come in next week and I've got like bruises and I've been beaten, it's because <laughs> I said World Cup instead of Stanley Cup. Oh. Uh, <laughs> they both. It's a worthy uh, ass. Occasionally kicking. both fight. Well, eh, I'm gonna stop right there. Anyway, Google TV. <laughs> hey, it does flash video, but Hulu's blocking Google TV. And the Comcast Fancast.com portal hack that folks were using. Oh, nice. And gadget ads that quote, sci-fi has joined the corporate parent NBC in blocking its streams from the devices. Of course, you can still just connect your fracking HD PC to your HD TV and watch Hulu and sci-fi that way. The content agreements, they seem to be the determining factor over what controls the internet TV you're receiving. At least the internet 
At least for the TV content that isn't already on BitTorrent, though. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of funny how that works. I, I don't, yeah, I don't understand why Hulu is blocked. I guess Hulu wants to get some money. I'm sure Hulu wants money directly out of Google in exchange for permission to be on. For every bit yeah, served, I, we I, want to be paid. It'd be interesting to like, know, with the, you know what, like Roku or Boxybox or any of the other, you know what I mean? Like Roku, like what was the deal that suddenly Hulu's showing up on that? It's true. I don't know. I got to think about that one. Hey, Oppo. A lot of you, a lot of you actually are fans of Oppo's Blu-ray players. They have a new Blu-ray player coming out. The much lauded BDP 83 will be replaced. Matter of fact, you can't even get the 83 anymore. Replaced by the BDP 93, which adds Blu-ray 3D, dual HDMI 1.4 ports in case your receiver can't deal with the Blu-ray 3D lifestyle, Netflix and Blockbuster streaming, an eSATA port for hard drive content along with a pair of USB ports, Marvel's QDO video processing, wireless and external IR along with RS-232 for you home automation types, True 24P processing, individual 7.1 analog audio output terminals in case the digital optical coax connections aren't enough for you. It supports NTSC and PAL conversion if the DVD or Blu-ray isn't region locked uh, or if someone comes out for a hack. <laughs> and enough. my favorite quote from Oppo, quote, per pixel motion adaptive deinterlacing and advanced scaling from Marvell to make your DVDs look spiffy in 1080p. Ooh. It's for pixel motion adaptive deinterlacing is good. Is that different from other like you that's know? The, that's the way it should be done. Okay, there that's that's some, the way. There's, it's some, done. there's some hack and slash methods that produce way less good video quality, but QDO's got it right. This is quite a list of features. The tab four hundred ninety nine dollars. Yeah. Uh, OppoDigital.com. You basically, if you head over to OppoDigital.com, you can sign up to be notified when it's ready to ship. It's going to be a super player. What happened with the eighty two? Did you say they ran out of parts? They have a listing on their website that says due to the inability to receive specific parts for that unit anymore mm -hmm. or, or very limited quantities, they said we're going to abandon that and move right onto the ninety three. So. I got to say that I, it, it may be me, but I think the feature lifts on the ninety three is much more compelling than the eighty three. Uh, it's just state-of-the-art everything, right. which is great. I'm curious to see if their 24p output mm -hmm. will work with DVD video as well as Blu-ray video because mm. that stuff's all 24. Most of your movies are 24p anyway, and I'm tired <laughs> of only Panasonic offering that functionality on their Blu-ray player and having to enable it manually every time. That's, That's just irritating. annoying. I, I, Panasonic should be able to fix that. They should. I have made them aware of it. <laughs> I'm going to crack the whip one more time, and then I'm just going to keep smiling about it. Oh, boy. <laughs> Moving on. Let's take a moment to hear from one of our sponsors, Busted Tees. You may have noticed that Mr. Heron and I are doing something unusual today, wearing T-shirts. In case you haven't heard of Busted Tees, the guys over at College Humor set up this website as a depot for funny shirts back in 2004, and they've been putting out some of the most awesome designs you're going to find on the Internet. It doesn't matter if you're into video games, movies, geography, politics, sci-fi, or just wrapping your torso with something weird, and they bring the weird at Busted Tees. Trust me, Busted Tees literally has you covered. You might have seen a busted tee or two pop up in movies like Knocked Up and shows like Scrubs. Now you can grab one to have your very own forever and ever and ever, or at least until you wear it out after sleeping in it every night with your teddy bear. Eight, and you know what? They're printed in the United States in high quality, super soft materials in a sweatshop fee environment, so you won't be plagued with guilt when you order them, which is, you know, always a plus. Do yourself a favor, head on over to BustedTees.com right now. Actually, do me a favor, finish watching HD Nation first, then head over to BustedTees.com, start scrolling, and get ready to find the shirt of your dreams, your bizarre, hilarious, occasionally disturbed dreams. And if you want to do yourself a real favor, enter in the promo code HDNation, you'll score 10% off your order, just in time for holiday shopping. For every beginning, there must be an end, right? Well, actually, a lot of our favorite TV shows just keep running on forever, like The Simpsons or South Park. Most shows, though, they run their course in a few seasons and they end in a series finale. There have been some epic series finales, like Six Feet Under and MASH, neither of which, of course, are available on Blu-ray. We were, however, able to dig up a few finales that are available in HD, so without further ado, here are our top five series finales available on Blu-ray. First on the list, after a tumultuous argument in the office, Battlestar Galactic, some <clears throat> Serafina might argue that the very last episode in the series might have been the worst of the entire series, but we still think that makes it better than most TV that's on the air today. This unlikely remake of a short-lived 1978 series turned out to be one of the best sci-fi TV series, well, ever, quite frankly. And if you're one of the three folks that hasn't seen it yet, Battlestar Galactica follows a fleet of spaceships with the last of human population as they flee and fight from the robot enemies, the Cylons, and they search for a habitable planet. And Serafina will break my legs if I don't point out that the finale does wrap things up, but she feels that it just isn't the most satisfying ending ever. Which, quite frankly, how could you follow up? It, it was an, it, if you haven't seen Battlestar Galactica, go rent it now. 
Get it on Netflix, trust me. Please, it's good. Number two, Serenity. But wait, you might say, that's not a TV show? Well, no, but since Josh Whedon's Firefly was shown out of order by Fox, cut short by Fox, and didn't really have a good wrap up, thanks Fox, many consider the movie Serenity as the de facto finale for the crew of the Firefly. Starring Nathan Fillion, Summer Glau, and the rest of the Firefly's crew, this space western came out three years after the TV show ended, thanks to big DVD sales and the concerted efforts of Serenity's fans, the Brown Coats. It allowed those involved to properly bring things to a close, and it's a great standalone movie all by itself. Good stuff, people. Enough with the sci-fi. Next on our list, The Sopranos. This epic HBO series follows a mob family in New Jersey led by Tony Soprano, played by an utterly terrifying James Gandolfini. Six seasons and 86 episodes aired over eight years, culminating in one of the most talked about finales ever. Some say it left you hanging, and some say that's what was so great about it. In any case, this show provided a window into some of the most interesting, complex characters ever written into television. Only the first and last seasons are available on Blu-ray so far, but hopefully we'll see the rest soon. Number four, Lost. Starting out as a simple bunch of people stranded on a desert island after a plane crash kind of premise, this show quickly grew seriously bizarre with polar bears, underground bunkers, and magic rivers galore. The show lasted six years, wrapping up with a series finale event earlier this year. All seasons are currently out on Blu-ray, either individually or in the collection, which combines them all together along with a boatload of extras, both digital and physical. Everything from deleted scenes to an actual blacklight. Robert was absolutely enthralled with this series, as was a good chunk of the TV-watching American audience. Rome. This HBO series follows the events of the ancient Rome in the first century BC as seen through the eyes of two soldiers. The show's writers had planned out five or so seasons, but found out during the second season they wouldn't get a third. So they picked up the pace and rushed through three seasons worth of plot lines in a half a season, finishing with the death of Mark Anthony and Cleopatra. It's a shame this series didn't last any longer, but rumor has it there's a film version in the works, so keep your eyes open for that. Number six on our top five list, 24. We're stretching a bit here since the eighth and final season won't be available on Blu-ray until December 14th, and as of right now, the only season that is available is the 7th. Starring Kiefer Sutherland as that ass-kicking do-gooder Jack Bauer, each season follows Jack through a single day as he goes to some extreme measures to foil various terrorist plots. With torture scenes, chase scenes, and plots that invariably ended in doom for anyone who dared to question or doubt Jack Bauer, this show lasted an amazing 10 years, finally coming to an end earlier this year. Check it out. Hey, it's time for the new releases for November 16th, 2010. First up, The Kids Are All Right, starring Juliana Moore, Annette Benning, and Mark Ruffalo. This film tells the story of a family with two moms and two teenage kids who decide to reconnect with their sperm donor. It's funny and heartwarming. It's a sweet family movie that manages not to be too sappy, and it's definitely worth a watch. The extras are pretty light. There's a feature-length commentary with the director slash co-writer, but aside from that, there are only three featurettes that are each between two to five minutes long. So don't buy it for the bonus features, but definitely give it a rent. Next up, Avatar, the extended collector's edition. You heard about this last week from our Bluecom footage, and now it's here. Avatar was released on Blu-ray back in April without any special features, and we heard why from Cameron himself last week. Turns out they wanted to release additional footage that had been cut early in the production process, but didn't have the time to finish all of the CG in time for the first release. Unfortunately, we still don't have word on a 3D release of the movie, but this one's loaded with extras. We're talking 45 minutes of deleted scenes, a feature-length documentary on the making of the film, James Cameron's visit to the Amazon rainforest, on-set footage of the filming of the performance capture process, and much more. You can even choose to watch the film with a, quote, family-friendly audio track, which Cameron explained was the result of his own young kids picking up objectionable language as they watched the movie. You also get a copy of the Avatar script and screenplay, lyrics from the songs of Avatar, something called Pandorapedia, and much more. So if you're at all interested in finding out how they made this epic, or just want more Pandora, you'll love all the stuff they crammed on this set. Also released this week, The World at War. This 26 episode World War II epic documentary originally aired in the UK in the 70s and is narrated by Laurence Olivier. As this was made a mere 30 years after the war, the filmmakers were able to get access to veterans and witnesses and capture some amazing interviews with those actually involved in the action. It totals 22 and a half hours, and if that wasn't enough, you'll also get 10 hours of special features, including the creator Jeremy Isaacs as he explains the restoration process. The series was originally produced in a 4x3 aspect ratio, but for this release, it's been converted to 16x9 using the pan and scan method, which is usually a bad sign, so if that's a deal breaker for you, you can pick up the DVD release, which has the original aspect ratio. 
Other releases include 16 Wishes, the History Channel's Ancient Aliens, Season 1, The Bee Gees in Our Own Time, Cats and Dogs, The Revenge of Kitty Galore, 2009's Children of the Corn, Crowley, 2009's A Christmas Carol, 2010's The Extra Man, Ghost Machine, Great Migrations, The Last Airbender Single Disc Edition, The Last Airbender Two Disc Blu-ray DVD Plus Digital Copy Special Edition, The Light Keepers, 2010's Lottery Ticket, The Criterion Collection's Modern Times, 1935's Mutiny on the Bounty, The Criterion Collection's The Night of the Hunter, Sherlock Jr. with Three Ages, Sondheim, The Birthday Concert, Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2, Staunton Hill, 2009's The Tournament, and The Twilight Zone Season 2. We're also seeing a slew of 3D releases this week, so if you've been holding off on buying a 3D TV for lack of content, you may want to reconsider. Releasing in 3D this week we have Cats and Dogs, The Revenge of Kitty Galore, Clash of the Titans, A Christmas Carol, IMAX's Deep Sea, IMAX's Under the Sea, IMAX's Space Station, the official 2010 FIFA World Cup film, Open Season, and The Polar Express. Hey, it's time to thank one of the sponsors of today's show, Audible. Audible.com is the leading provider of downloadable digital audiobooks and spoken word entertainment. Audible has over 75,000 titles to choose from to be downloaded to your iPod or MP3 player and played back anywhere, anytime. Choose from books in every genre, science fiction, thrillers, drama, comedy, business, history, and more. Digital audiobooks are also great for soothing frayed nerves while navigating the busy highways, and a good story always seems to somehow shorten a long trip. The works of the late great Douglas Adams blend Huber science and fantasy in a way that's all but guaranteed to make me smile, often. And Audible has the unabridged edition of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, narrated by Stephen Fry, available for download. Want it for free? Just go to audiblepodcast.com slash hdnation to get a free audiobook download of your choice when you sign up today. Again, go to audiblepodcast.com slash hdnation for your free audiobook. Everybody's looking for the best bargain in HDTV, right? Well, Vizio's always kicking down the barriers on better quality for less money. The XVT 47, well, it's XVT 47 3SV. Yeah. Do you actually were, I, I, it is no Samsung 8000, I will say that. I, oh. I, I finally got to get hands on with the Samsung 8000 Spoiled last night. Spoiled your eyes on that TV. <gasps> Oh my goodness. I think that's probably the best TV Samsung did this year. It's also 2000 on the street. For which size? 46 inch. Oh, okay. So, Well, for 1300 bucks, <laughs> this Vizio XVT series is their latest XVT panel, 47 inch screen, 1080p resolution. We, we gave a preview of this earlier. We did the mm -hmm. unboxing, but we're finished with all the testing and everything. Basically, it's a direct LED backlighting system with zoned dimming, which means that instead of having edge lit, where you can, uh, you can get some issues, basically, if you look at it off angle a little bit, and sometimes the black level is not as black as you would mm -hmm. like, this has local dimming with direct lit LED system, so basically you can make it r look really contrasty, and it also reduces energy consumption at the same time. Hmm. Four HDMI ports on this, one supporting the audio return feature, so if you have a new AVR, that instead of having to connect, say, the digital optical out of your TV into the AVR, if you're using the TV's integrated tuner, this actually supports that audio return over a compatible HDMI cable. Pretty nice, and a new feature for TVs right, lately. Probably the biggest deal about this, though, it's the integrated 802.11n plus Bluetooth right in the TV. Uh, that's just awesome. Nothing to really mess with. You just turn it on, and it works. Also, the remote is a Bluetooth remote as well, so you can use it as a standard mm -hmm. infrared remote or with Bluetooth control with a slider keyboard built in. That's just terrific. Right out of the box, with standard picture settings, this is the default you get when you first turn it on, we found the color gamut. That's basically what colors can the TV display and how saturated they are. Well, they matched the HD video standard pretty well. The colors were well saturated, but they didn't go over the line and become cartoony or oversaturated. Or blown out. Yes, definitely. <laughs> also, with that default setting, the white balance, otherwise known as how you mix red, blue, and green to make white. It was remarkably consistent, and this is a good, I see this a lot with LED backlit LCD panels. This really helped out with skin tones, especially in light and dark scenes. It maintained a nice consistency. Now, when I switched over to the movie mode, its preset gave me a white balance, that, that mixing again, that was a little reddish, and that's kind of common with a lot of TVs I look at. But the related picture controls paired with a good color analyzer brought everything nicely into balance. Now, the XVT's on-screen display did get in the way when I was taking measurements of this from the screen. It would be nice if Vizio did add a means of moving that on-screen display around in a future update. 
I also like to see Vizio integrate a set of basic calibration tools plus a red, blue, green mode for the DIYers out there who want to do their own work on the set and tune things just right. Uh, LG's doing that currently, so is Samsung's finally stepping up the ball on that. It'd be nice to see them maybe add an app or something that gives you similar functionality. Uh, the TV also could make it easier to copy the calibrated settings to other inputs and features. Basically, once I calibrated for one input, mm -hmm. one HDMI input with a, with a source device, I'll, I wanted to be able to copy that easily over to the other ports because odds are it'd be fairly similar. LG offers this feature, and I really do appreciate it. I really wanted it for the TV's integrated support for Netflix because as soon as I switched over to watching Netflix instant streaming, I noticed my calibrated settings were all out the window, and I basically <laughs> had to do my own manual copy, and then everything was great. On the video processing front, the XVT did a superb job of deinterlacing 1080i video sources. That's the kind of stuff you get from your HD content from your cable or satellite provider. Most of it's in seven, or 1080i. Uh, I didn't see any jagged lines and I, from or other artifacts that are related to deinterlacing video. And I threw a lot of challenging content at this, and it passed cleanly. And I was really impressed with that solid video processing. Now the viewing experience, front and center. The XVT zoned dimming makes for impressively dark black levels. The, the TV essentially shuts off when it's displaying black, so black is pretty dark. However, you will see some halos, though, if you have a smallish bright spot on an otherwise dark background. It was really noticeable if I ever brought the Windows cursor over mm -hmm. onto the screen, because suddenly the cursor would light up, and then around it you'd see a nice halo where all the LEDs were kicking on nearby. And that's that's common, though, with most LED, back, basically backlit LED panels, right? They can get some really good darks, but any sort of bright light or, or totally. the, the flashlight from the Matrix will kind of pop and have a halo around or it. Or one LED or one cluster of LEDs is mm -hmm. actually hitting a bunch of pixels, so you don't have per-pixel lighting right. yet, at least. That might be coming up in the future. But that's why you end up with that halo effect around there, because... It's not quite perfect, but <laughs> better than TVs that don't have it. Right. The bottom line, you will really be hard-pressed to find a similar LED television that incorporates as many integrated features as the 473SV for a lower price point. Now, if you don't want or need Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Internet apps in your television, this probably isn't the TV for you, and you can save some coin by going with a more traditional flat panel. But this is a pretty good deal. I mean, you know, for 47 inches, $1,300, impressive picture experience, probably totally. beat only by the... The Panasonic uh, and the Samsung 8000. Totally. The VT25. But those are much more expensive options, right. too. Almost twice as much. Almost. But Almost. they have really stocked the kitchen sink, literally, in mm -hmm. terms of all the features I'd want for connectivity, being able to the TV to update itself, the control systems, having a Bluetooth remote, right. have that to be able to even connect to your phone. If you have a smartphone with Bluetooth built in, which a lot of people do nowadays. So suddenly your cell phone will show up playing through your HDTV. Totally. Or, or you can even use some uh, direct Teenagers control apps. Beware. Yeah. <laughs> There's some control apps out there, too, to turn your phone into a remote for various projects. Too. But I just got to say, this is one of the best sets I've seen out of Vizio since mm -hmm. they've started this. And their transition to LED is really showing an improvement across the board in their picture quality. And this is a technically great set. Cool. Yeah, I like it. Should be on your short list for holiday shopping, people. Right now, time for a message from one of our sponsors, Squarespace.com. Look, you got a website? You should be checking out Squarespace.com. Squarespace offers users a flexible solution. If you're looking to create a blog, a personal portfolio, any kind of website, Squarespace can give you the tools you need to make an amazing website. And it doesn't matter if you can't code. They've got simple, easy drag-and-drop tools that'll help you create a high-end, complex website without spending a lot of cash. And you don't have to worry if you have any questions or issues. Squarespace, unlike some sites, offers 24-7 support to every user. Squarespace also has a pretty slick iPhone app. They recently updated it with some nifty features like full HTML blog editing on the go and comment moderation. And you can get push notifications to your iPhone. That'll let you know when there's new comments. Then you can go in and mark existing comments as spam, reply to your comments, quite a bit more, all from inside your iPhone. Now, look, if you haven't heard of Squarespace, trust me, this is a solid website. Many of the Internet's most highly trafficked web pages are powered by Squarespace. Not to mention many of the personal pages are Revision 3's hosts and personalities. Go to squarespace.com to learn more, and be sure to enter in the code HDNATION when you check it out to earn 10% off for the lifetime of your order. Please support HDNATION by supporting our sponsors like Squarespace. Tim sent us this email asking us, I've been thinking of buying a Blu-ray player, but I'm afraid I'll buy something that has software that can't keep up with the changing formats. Has internet connectivity fixed that? Would you do a shootout of your top three player picks for, say, $150 and, or under $150 and over $150? Signed, Tim. We should point out that the formats don't really change. It's the security that changes. That, that gets updated regularly. Right. So, and if you've come across a new disk suddenly that is incompatible, your best bet is to do a firmware update. So, 
that basically, I don't care how much you're going to spend, I, I would suggest going with a manufacturer that provides <laughs> ongoing support for its products. Check the company's right. support site, number one, no matter who you're thinking of going for, and see if they provide regular updates for their current players, or even better, last year's lineup of players to see if they're still taking care of you down the road. Yeah, if, if they're updating some of the first generation players, it's pretty solid support from a company. Totally. Especially since the what has from the, when, when Blu-ray released, like BD Live wasn't really done, the, the format was evolving a little bit. Totally. At this point, it's pretty solid, but you do want a vendor that continues to support the firmware. Yeah. Like I said, I wouldn't buy any player that lacks the network connectivity, mm -hmm. particularly for those very firmware updates that are so necessary right. nowadays. Now, for under 150 bucks, a couple that just hit me in the face and said, you know what, these look great. Uh, LG's BD550, that includes Voodoo, Netflix, and Cinema Now, so nice. if you're into streaming video, there's a lot there. And it also handles your DLNA support, so if you've got files on your network or you want to plug some stuff in, mm -hmm. it'll do a lot of decoding of a variety of file formats out there, too. Another good inexpensive, relatively inexpensive player, Sony's S370. This is an update from their S360, which unfortunately, oh, thank goodness, you don't have to go with the S360 anymore because it doesn't have an eject button on the remote. I, I own that one. Okay. People think I'm insane, but if, if you... That's a minor quirk. If you don't have an eject <laughs> button on the remote, then you have to walk all the way to the machine to eject your disc and put in the next disc just, instead of having the tray stuff at it until the disc... Oh, no. uh, but anyway, the 370 fixes that. It also includes streaming services like Netflix, Amazon yeah. Video On Demand, and Pandora. Nice. For 150 bucks or more, get a PlayStation 3, but I would say, really? I would just say you're going to have your best support down the road. Not the panty, not, not the, not the. If you're going to spend over 150 bucks, well, yeah, if you have specific audio needs, you know what, I'll cover that with my last suggestion. <laughs> if you collect, say, super audio CDs, SACD or DVDA right. discs, then perhaps, and you have maybe something like analog output needs, uh, be it audio or video. A universal player like the now discontinued Oppo BD83 or the upcoming 93 model is worth your consideration. That's really the one time I'll push somebody toward a higher-end player like something from Oppo where they have support for those higher-end higher audio formats because most disc players won't support either of those. What about like the $3,000 Blu-ray players that are out there? I, I, if you want one. <laughs> <laughs> if, you want, if you get one of those, you're basically I was looking at HDMI cables neighbors. the other day, and there were three grades of them, and the only mm -hmm. difference between all of them was how much silver content was in the shielding around it. How much silver would you like on your cable, sir? We'll up right. the price accordingly. <laughs> I'm just like, does it make anything look better? No. So save your money. I don't. Just got to bring that out. I don't. Uh, if you want a $3,000 player, I will find one for you, but <laughs> <laughs> let it go. Chris wrote in, I'm in the market for a new TV, something higher end, around 50 inches, for everything from cable, streaming, DVDs, and Blu-ray, and console gaming and PC gaming. I'm undecided on LED versus plasma, but may go with LED for energy consumption reasons. I'm also undecided about buying a current year model or last year's model. If the next two months are the best time to buy a new TV, I'll get a current model, but if next year's models will be that much better for a decent price, I don't mind waiting until the spring to buy one. Chris in New York. Ooh, pull out the crystal ball. Well, yeah. In general, for the power consumption issue you mentioned, yes, plasmas do consume more electricity than LCDs, especially if you use a plasma TV's vivid picture preset to produce an ultra-bright, punchy picture. And, and to get a suntan while you're watching yeah, HDTV. If you're trying to pull a lot of light from a, or put, get, a, get a plasma to push out a lot of light, right. you're going to end up jacking up your power consumption to extreme levels compared to an LCD panel. That said, the latest generations of plasma panels are, are pretty much at the same or advanced energy star basically are, are, are passing the same energy star requirements that LEDs are. So Out the, of the box. There's not a huge, like, you know, there's not a huge gulf between plasma and LED electrical consumption. Totally. And it, like Alyssa said, unless you're looking for just straight light output and, you're, and you start trying to max out the performance <laughs> of a plasma panel, suddenly the plasma is running at 500 watts, where right. the LCD panel might be running at, say, half that. That's, you know, say, that's a, that's a, that's a, that can be a lot of juice. However, next year's <laughs> models will be introduced in a couple of months when we're at CES, uh, the 2011 Consumer Electronics Show that'll be hosted in Las Vegas, as it always is. However, the TVs we see there, especially the, the larger premium models you're interested in, those 2011 models won't be out in the stores for another nine months or so after we get to preview, preview them at CES. So, uh, you know what? You either save up your cash until next spring and get the newer technology, or track the prices on this year's gear and pull the trigger when the numbers look good. I wouldn't be looking at anything from last year, because odds are, if you're finding that still in, in retail channels, that right. might be some secondary seller who, who had like 
six of them, and you'll never see or be able to support that TV again unless right. you can get support from the manufacturer. So. Yeah, I mean, uh, keep fairly current on unless you're buying it used or getting a ridiculously low price. Totally. Um, you got to draw your line in the sand at some point and just say, this is where I'm going to settle for. Do I see anything that's going to be <laughs> incredible, just would prevent me from wait, waiting yet another year for a TV? Probably not. Not if you're right, right on the verge of it. But if you can wait, you're always going to get it. One last question before we go. Rick writes in, now that the PS3 is 3D ready, I was hoping to jump on the bandwagon. There are a number of LED and LCD based 3D HD TVs out there, but what about projectors? I'm going to set it up in a dedicated media room, so I'll have pretty good control of the light level in the room. Excellent. I'm willing to spend uh, one, uh, 1,000 to 1,500 bucks. Is that reasonable for a good 3D projector, or will I get stuck with crap for that money, signed Rick from Los Angeles. Oh boy, um, do you like 720p displays? Because if you're if you're looking to spend a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars on a 3D pr front projector, you're looking at uh, native 720p, uh, which is half the resolution of a 3D Blu-ray movie. Totally, and those the current models that are out regular right now <laughs> are I'm finding there are a handful of 3D ready mm -hmm. uh, front projectors out there for about I want to say seven to eight hundred dollars. So the price points there, however, one problem is, is that most of these 720p 3D front projectors are not compatible with most 3D Blu-ray players. They uh -oh. are <laughs> They are literally, literally designed to work with some PC game consoles. Uh, that might not even be true, actually. Or PC graphics cards that can output 120 hertz video signal. That's mostly what these are for. And that requires you to basically have a home theater PC with compatible 3D player software or, or games that support 3D and a graphics right. and driver package that supports that projector. Uh, anyway. At the 2011 CES coming up in a couple months, or actually in a month, wow, that's, or, no, two Six months. Six weeks. Six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> We're expecting to see a lot more in this space for 3D front projectors, hopefully some sporting native 1080p resolution, and hopefully improved compatibility with set-top box player, or set-top players uh, for Blu-ray support. Right. Well, I mean, in, in terms of Blu-ray support, right, it's, it's not hard to get good 1080p two-dimensional Playback. I mean, oh, totally. you know, it, that, that's easy to do. There's a good, you know, yeah. It, it's the the HD20 or the HD180 from uh, Optoma. Optum. Then, or op <laughs> excuse me, Optoma. Yeah, yeah Optoma. Optum on the brain. The uh, and then you jump up to the the. We actually talked about this. You hosted Texel this week, and we talked about a couple of the options you have for around two thousand dollars. They give you improved black level and some better color. Um, but 3D projectors are definitely trailing 3D televisions in terms of availability yeah. and price. You, you can always, if, if you've got the cash, you'd have probably add another zero to it, get you <laughs> up closer to 15 grand. But there are some high-end projectors that are starting to right. move into that space, and I'm hoping that at CES we'll see the, the mainstream manufacturers start to deliver right. products at better, you know, more affordable prices. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, we hope you guys enjoyed this episode of HD Nation. As always, all that great HD Nation content is available on the site. So if you forgot the name of that TV, Blu-ray player, or other home theater gadget from this or past episodes, just check out revision3.com slash hdnation. Now we've got a pretty big announcement to make before we wrap this episode. In the immortal words of Bull Durham, my favorite baseball movie ever, which is also available on Blu-ray, uh, even when it wasn't available on Blu-ray, still my favorite baseball movie. Yeah. In any Classic. case, the line I'm thinking of is, quote, the organization has decided to make a change. Now, this usually happens before somebody's cut from the Bull Durham minor league team, but in this case, I want to point out that AC Nation is not going away. Mr. Heron and I will still be bringing you a weekly AC Nation spot on HD, HDTVs, and home theater, along with the latest Blu-ray releases. Hey, but it won't be a 30-minute show like we're doing now. It will be part of an expanded Techzilla, which is going to two episodes a week. Now, you won't have to watch Techzilla to see the new HD Nation segments. The HD Nation RSS feed, channels, and webpage will stay live and bring you a new HD Nation short every week. Though frankly, I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to tune in to see Veronica, Patrick, and I get our Techzilla on. Seriously, Rob and I are just trading sets, not getting traded, and we'll still be insanely passionate about HD, HDTV, online video, Blu-ray, and home theater in general. <laughs> so do us a favor, keep sending in your HD questions, comments, and suggestions, just direct them to TechZilla at revision3.com. HD Nation might return as a long format show in the future, who knows, but I want to say that it's been a pleasure getting our HD on for you every week. Most definitely. 71 episodes? 71. 72 next week. Boom. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm Robert Heron. We'll see you next week on Techzilla. And HD Nation.